So as I mentioned, in the very beginning, um, we had no customers. So uh, we had to find our first sort of early adopter group. Thankfully, that group lived in our backyard. They were tech bloggers uh, gathering people with, uh, around tech meetups. So um, like-minded people gathering for meetups or talks or conferences. And at the same time, because we had built this self-service, easily accessible platform, we had other types of users quickly adopting the platform, like speed dating in New York. Does anybody even know what speed dating is? I mean, that was in 2006. This was like the way in which people met each other. So we, had, we, we knew right off the bat that our customers would be wide and varied because we were building this horizontal platform that can meet the needs of any type of event organizer. And that was actually part of our strategy. It was a little bit crazy, but part of our part of the strategy. And so by staying close to our customers and really building a relationship from the beginning, again, I was the customer service department. I literally was answering customer service emails from the labor and delivery room when we had our first child. Uh, and the, the story goes, they had to take the computer away from me. And everybody said, oh, she's so dedicated. And I said, well, no, I just don't want, I don't want to know what comes next. Um, and so you know, having that lifeline with our customers was actually incredibly important to us in the beginning. Because not only did it give us direct feedback on what we were building in real time, but it allowed us to future cast what our customers would need as we began to grow. The second uh, sort of fuel to the organism, this uh, startup organism, is, is something if, if we've talked about customers as, you know, I, I, I would put them as like the high protein, the most nutritious form of it, uh, capital is kind of like the sugar. Uh, so it gets you going, uh, but it doesn't last. Uh, and, and it gives you kind of a burst of energy, but you can't survive off it on your own. And um, over the years, I'd gotten pretty good at, at raising capital with Zoom. Uh, Zoom as a money transfer business uh, was a very capital intensive business. We were moving money all around the world. Uh, we had massive fraud attacks. We had to build out all these areas that we hadn't foreseen. And so it felt like during those times, albeit very exciting, we were on our heels. Uh, a bit raising capital. And that was a, a message uh, to me. That was a message really uh, that in the next, in, you know, in act two that, that I uh, and we at Eventbrite would be very capital efficient and be able to lean forward and, and go after capital when we needed it. So uh, as Julia mentioned, we effectively bootstrapped the company for the first two years. And that was on this diet of customers, uh, the right diet. And, and then um, you know, it was time to raise money. And always when, uh, you know, as, as the adage goes, uh, the capital's always there when you don't need it, when you desperately need it, it it's not available. Uh, and the lesson here is that we built ourselves into a position where we didn't need the capital. This happened to be, though, in, in uh, 2000, end of 2008, 2009, and the markets collapsed. And we were terrified. We didn't know what was going to happen with the business if we expected a downturn. Uh, so we started to go out and, and, and raise venture capital. And literally everyone in the valley uh, turned us down. I still run into people, and they go, oh, I remember meeting you and saying no. <laughs> and um, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> we, we don't want to do a victory dance or anything quite yet. Yeah, we still have a long ways to go. But uh, in short, um, we, we were um, in early 2009 at a point where we just said, well, let's just put our heads down and, and build the business. We took on a little uh, bridge money. And lo and behold, the business had taken off. And I really think that that was because we focused around being customer centric those previous two years and saw the business really blossom in, in 2009 versus most others. Um, and, and all these companies that had become bloated with, with capital and relying on capital had failed. Uh, and, and we culminated 2009 with uh, Sequoia Capital investing uh, $6.5 million at, at the end of that year with Roloff Botha, one of, these, uh, one of our uh, favorite PayPal mafiosas, uh, investing, leading the investment, and joining the board. The third thing that we think about is talent. So, you know, it was just the three of us for the first two years, and then we 
we, after we raised our, we actually raised an angel round to hire our first team. And that was around 15 people in the third year of Eventbrite. And that was such a transformative time for us because, you know, being three co-founders, you're doing a lot. And there's a huge opportunity to bring on talent that is way more brilliant than yourselves uh, in many more areas than you could possibly have imagined to focus on in the beginning. So in the beginning, it was really just about product and customers. But once we tapped into talent and were able to bring talent onto our team, we were able to extend ourselves way beyond where we had been in the first two years. Now, I want to back up and say, you know, in 2006, Founding a company and placing it in San Francisco was actually contrarian. I know that's kind of uh, mind-boggling now since we are battling uh, the real estate wars and the talent wars in San Francisco. But the conventional wisdom was that you place your company down here near Stanford. Uh, and uh, we, we felt sort of this inherent pull towards San Francisco, A, to be contrarian, and B, to be near um, what is crucial and what is the lifeline to our business, which are live experiences. So San Francisco being a very culturally dense metro uh, is a great place for us to be, to be very close to our subject matter. But what we found was that once we got started and once we were able to access talent who wanted to be part of our vision, who were sold on that vision of bringing the world together through live experiences, that was really a turning point for Eventbrite. Because it became abundantly clear to Kevin and I that we weren't just looking to build something and flip it or to create just the best business model for, uh, for revenue's sake, but really to create an amazing company. And so the nutrient of talent is very, very, very important. I can't underline it more. I'll talk about it more today, actually. Uh, but really understanding where you can access talent is extremely important, and we actually took a bet on San Francisco. But I think that as we as we look at where the trends have taken us, and now how uh, you know abundant the talent is here, but how fierce the competition is to get talent, we understand that we were right in saying that talent is a crucial nutrient for the startup organism.